Yesterday's 10 kilometer freestyle, 24 minutes, 23.6 when all the bonuses are calculated in. And he has an 11.8 second advantage over Dario Colonia, who will be starting uh, right after him. And then Legkopf and Clara and Magnificat and Olsen. But as uh, Peter Nortuk said after yesterday's race, I'll have 130 hunting me well it's not quite 130 it's actually something like 111 i think and uh, it'll be uh, very interesting to see uh, nortuk's tactics mike dixon alongside myself david goldstrom we've had a little chat about this i guess we're both agree we think that nortuk's gonna just go into cruise mode sit in with the boys and use that fantastic finish that he has i, I think so but th there is quite a, a gap if you look back further down the field there we are back down to the boys leg of 42 seconds behind clara 48 but without a doubt colonia i i absolutely believe will we'll absorb will catch up nor very quickly now it's whether they, these two decide to keep it strong keep it fast and work together to try and keep the rest of the pack off i don't think that will work out i think there will be a a large pack of 15 to 20 athletes uh, after about five kilometers i guess it's because we actually think that nortuk doesn't naturally like to lead races he doesn't he doesn't and, and it wouldn't be in his best interest today if you've got this 11 second gap and then 41 back to Lekov, if you put all your money on the table and go hard from the line if, especially when you can finish like he can the fastest man in the world over the last 200 meters what's the point he'll want to conserve something no point in pushing hard all the way dario colonia on the other hand i think he'll try and keep it strong to uh, to weaken the rest of the athletes chasing but we'll have to wait and see last weekend and this weekend we've seen dario start strongly but actually lose positions towards the end of the race here is dario colonia and uh, 12 seconds the uh, deficit for uh, dario to uh, make up and then alexander legkov in uh, third place about to uh, start 42 seconds behind now the course mike two and a half kilometers same track as the women uh by no means the toughest journey it's not it's uh, and for every bit of work you do as uh, not to get bolts off the start line for all this uh, the work you do on the track there's big recoveries two big recovery sessions interesting to see uh, Nortuk start it was a pretty positive effort and uh, clearly Dario Colonia going out there as Nortuk drops down this familiar right-hander and then goes into the left-hander at the bottom before he uh, prepares for the first of the uh, climbing phases. And uh, three, this is Alexander Legkov. Legkov, uh, who so far in the World Cup season, where he finished 11th in Shushan, 15 kilometers freestyle, and uh, 11th equal in the 10 kilometer free yesterday and he was 18th in the sprint so those are not bad stats i have to say he's good he's very good in fact he came late to the classic he skated from a young age up to the age of 16 but it, now he has learned uh, deeply learned the classic and is, is going to be a contender today roland clara well we've been impressed with him two personal bests in these uh, middle distance races second in kusamo yesterday on the 10 kilometer free third in shushan interesting to see how he does though in classic style because his best performances have all really come in the freestyle it will be interesting to see clara but i'm not sure he's going to hold on to his fourth position that was running just heading out there big deficit uh, back to running one minute ten but i do believe that running is going to close this gap down if not actually make contact with the the lead group if it turns out that way he's, so. he's easily making it look quite easy at the moment isn't he he's expecting dario i'm quite sure to be on his skis soon well what will be interesting to see whether we've got it right or whether we, we've got it wrong i mean you made a good point though uh, he wouldn't be too worried i don't think about dario uh, closing the 12 seconds but would he want to give away 42 seconds to legkoff and clara and magnificat and olsen and helner and jesperson i don't think <laughs> it's an interesting one we'll have to wait and see but um, i'm quite sure that uh, the chasing pack there's legkoff already in the background i'm quite sure we're going to see a pack at the front well, it's Legkoff who could make the biggest difference of those. I mean, of those who are starting uh, closest to Nortuk, in terms of classic prowess, you'd have to give that to Legkoff, wouldn't you? So 
maybe Legkov uh, and uh, if he can get on terms with Colonia, but then would Clara, would Magnificat really close up? Would Johan Olsen make an impression? What about Helner, uh, who wears uh, bib number seven? Helner, again, you know, when you look at his uh, form, you're looking really most of the time at freestyle. Yes, Helner, he's admitted it himself. He has worked an awful lot to try and uh, improve the efficiency of his classic skiing. And uh, part of that was he used to kick his foot up behind him and uh, not extend with a straight leg. He's worked on getting the efficiencies, but I don't think he's a real contender. So maybe Lucas Bauer, who starts wearing bib 11, uh, a minute off the pace. Uh, obviously coming back off the sick list, but yesterday was not a bad performance by any means. It was a good performance. I also think Pedro Sedov, uh, we saw him last weekend in the Classic and the Relay, very good indeed. And I think even further back, uh, although it's an awful long way back, uh, Daniel Rickardson, who starts at uh, 1 minute 30 behind, but it is 50 to 15 kilometers, and I think we will see as much as, uh, as Rickardson coming back up into the lead group. So Colonia's had a little nibble into the uh, time and uh, has taken 12 seconds back down to uh, seven and a half. But there's Legkov uh, 33 and a half seconds back. Now Legkov uh, 42 seconds when he started his run. So uh, that is a nine second gain there by Legkov. And uh, looking at Johan Olsen, uh, 42 seconds, he's actually made 10 seconds as well. But Roland Clara has actually uh, made only five seconds. Uh, Lucas Bauer, 51 seconds, he's made nine seconds. So there's two or three of them there who've made 10 seconds inside the uh, first 1,400 metres. That's, that's very significant. Evgeny Belov as well, uh, he's pulled back 12 seconds, so he's the biggest mover in terms of time at the moment. Lucas Bauer, 51 behind now. Yeah, good nine, start. Nine seconds. So, I mean, sorry, David, that, I think that, that gives us a clear indication that Nortuk, had he wanted to, he would have been able to have clearly maintained those the same margins. So he's losing 10 seconds to the, the chasing main big names. But this is all about uh, pacing as well. You have a full tank of petrol when you leave the start line, and it's how you use that tank of petrol. And you can burst away, you can run away and lose... Uh, or use up an awful lot of energy early on and then uh, leave yourself vulnerable at the end of the race. And I don't think Nortuk's uh, going to do that. I don't think so, but as you say, it depends on your strategy. Those further down on the start sheet, they have to put all their money out early and they have to use a lot of fuel early to try and hunt down, to try and close their time on the leader. What a great position for Nortuk, though. He's uh, <laughs> to have such a margin to run the race the way he wants to. So coming back into the stadium towards the end of the first uh, two and a half kilometers and Colonia, as you predicted, Mike, has uh, closed that uh, 12 second gap. But actually, uh, he's been allowed to really close that pretty easily by uh, Nortuk. It doesn't worry Nortuk. Uh, and Norton will be getting splits not to uh, Colonia. He'll have been getting splits back to the likes of Legkov and Bauer uh, because those are the people to whom he doesn't want to give time away. You're right. And look at Norton. He, he is such a tactical athlete. Uh, straight away he moved over and said, uh, all right, come on through, uh, Dario. Because Leg uh, Norton just does not want to lead this thing. And look at this, Mike, as they go out of the stadium, they get a uh, distance barometer because uh, in third place, this is going to be Legkov, and they see him to their left. He sees them uh, to his left, and five behind there, that's uh, Maurice Magnificat. Behind him is Johan Olsen in uh, white for Sweden. I think they, they, at their team meetings last night, they, they will have all said, well, we know what Nortuk is most likely to do. He's going to back off and uh, he's not going to push it early. So we have to go out hard and try and haul him in quickly. Belloff and Helner in there, and that's set off going through. And Tobias Anger for Germany, eight there, Jespersen, 14. That's Schurota for Norway. And uh, you can see the uh, gaps here at two and a half kilometers. 29.6 seconds back to Legkov. He started that first leg with a 42 second uh, deficit. And Lucas Bauer, 48 seconds as opposed to the minute that he had when he uh, started his run. But uh, it's Colonia cutting out the donkey work. Nortug in cruise. 
So Dario Colonia doing the work here for uh, Peda Nortuk. Uh, contrasting styles here. Very contrasting indeed. Uh, Nortuk, he's got such phenomenal arm power. He's, uh, he's, he's doing, he's using his arms just a little further up the hill than uh, Colonia was. Now they're both into the diagonal stride, leg of that attacking lean forward, the, almost the hunch shoulders attitude, but using very long pulls, slipping slightly. His, uh, his grip wax not working too well, but that's much the same for everybody here. Alex Harvey, the very good Canadian, uh, started, what, 124 off the pace, here, inside a minute off the pace, so he's uh, working his way through the pack. But basically, if Dario Colonia is getting the right splits from the Swiss coaches, what he's going to be doing is trying to hold off the likes of Legkoff and everybody else. And all Nortuk's going to do is to sort of sit in there and just wait and wait and wait. Now, Legkoff, last time we saw him, of course, uh, Legkoff was in third place, as he is now. He was 29 seconds off the pace. And uh, coming up to this checkpoint now, and you can see he hasn't uh, lost much. Uh, but he hasn't gained anything either. In fact, uh, Legkov 27.9 and it was 29.6. So pretty steady there. Helner, though, has made uh, ground from 40 seconds. He's cut the deficit to 33. So Helner is actually skiing extremely well. And of all the people behind, he's actually the most impressive. Very much so. And uh, well, Nortuk's uh, going, uh, taking some of the, the donkey work up the front here. Dario Colonia did go to the front. He did keep the pace strong, as, as I think plays more into Colonia's strengths. It's in his interest to keep the rest of the pack at bay, to hold them back by that safety cushion of 25 seconds. And uh, it looks like they're going to work together now, David, to try and keep that safety cushion. Yeah, interesting about Helner, though. He is the Olympic 30-kilometer pursuit champion from Vancouver. And you can see he's got Lekkov in his sights. Here he comes, leading this little train of competitors with uh, Beloff right behind him in the blue and red. And then uh, six, that's Johan Olsen, already a World Cup winner this season in Shushan last weekend. And just behind, that's Magnificat of France. And they're beginning to uh, spread out a little bit here. And uh, we need to check on one or two others. Roland Clara going uh, backwards at the moment. 47 seconds the spread back to uh, Sedov, and he was a minute and two. So still making ground, but not so quickly. Lukas Bauer seems to have stabilized at 47 seconds off the pace. Alex Harvey, 51 seconds. He's taken another six seconds off the deficit, off his personal deficit. That's impressive. You will get another shot of that corner, hopefully. And with these, uh, the, these classic shoes, they don't give any ankle support, really. And uh, they're much longer skis than in the skating style. So a number of the athletes, especially when they're packed together, struggling on the fast descent there. I'll tell you what's happening with Alex Harvey, actually. He's traveling with Maxim Legjanin of Russia. They're both uh, 120 off, and they're both 51 seconds off now. So because they're running together, that's why they're uh, actually beginning to uh, reduce the uh, deficit. A long way to go. Six rotations uh, as they uh, come round into the uh, stadium to complete one-third distance. And it's Dario Colonia leading Peter Norto. You sense, David, there's a, there's a little tension at the front here. Dario danced across to the far right track, then back to the middle. They've changed two or three times, just hinting for Pedro Nortug to come through to, to let him pass, but Nortug having none of it. Now they need to be careful here because Legkov is in no man's land, but he's, uh, he's pushing so hard to make contact with the lead two. Yeah, Legkov... Uh... You sense that that little train behind him are going to get to Legkov, and maybe that would help him, actually. It's a big train. Uh, Ruining's in there. Ruining, uh, I think, is uh, a, a potential podium position today, depending on how this unfolds, but I still believe he's going to make it into the top five. Yeah, running 44 seconds from a starting deficit of 111. So, what's that, 71 seconds down to... Well, 41, so that's a, a good gain there. And just looking at uh, Legjanin, 46 seconds, and he's now going with Ronin. So uh, Legjanin, um, just having a look at uh, where, what's happened to Alex Harvey, because Legjanin, um, yeah, he's broken ahead of Alex Harvey. So interesting that the other Russian there is going pretty well. 
Now Dario absolutely taking the initiative here. He's think he's had a look back. He's checked out that Lekov's still about 26 seconds behind, and he's 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 now pressing hard. The, the tempo has increased. Lovely efficient moves there through the hips from Dario Colonia at the front there. And there's the glide. So you compress, big uh, impact through the shoe there the, to get the compression off the grip wax, and then you have to glide as far as you can on that propulsion before you bring the next leg into play. Double pulling now, this is called double pull, single leg kick, alternating the leg, it's left leg, now right leg, getting a good explosive uh, compression into the ski. Whereas a uh, completely different approach from uh, Peter Nordzog. Yeah, using his <laughs> phenomenal upper body strength, his double pulling power is, is better than anyone else in the world. Interesting leg, Gianni now into the top 10 from a starting number of, what, 23. So that's a really good gain. He, of course, a double silver medalist from last year's World Championships in Oslo. Well, as you see uh, Legkov going through there, in the chasing posse is Legjanin, who's, as I said, moved up from uh, a start number of 23rd, and he must be the fastest mover. Here you can see Magnificat in the yellow and black. And then you've got uh, nine there, that was Belov. There's Legjanin going through, and in there also the Swedes, Johan Olsen and Helner. Legjanin, I think you're right, he is the fastest mover on the track. He's pulled back 40 seconds on Nortuk's time, so well, just under 30 seconds on Dario Colonia's time. That's a lot of energy output in, uh, in the, the first part of this race. It is indeed, but it's uh, making it interesting because at the moment, nobody's able to bridge the gap. It needs somebody to try and bridge that gap, but it's going to take an awful lot of energy to do that. 31 going through there. That's uh, Jean-Marc Gaia, 37, Devin Kershaw, his teammate Alex Harvey ahead of him at the moment. But Alex not able to go with Legjanin. When Legjanin made the move uh, coming out of the stadium, uh, Alex Harvey couldn't go with him. No, he couldn't. The pace there from Legjanin. This is the difficult part, the only real technical difficult a bit alongside the drop, out, drop off from the stadium. And uh, when there's a number of, a lot of people together, that becomes quite a difficult left-hander, as we'll see this group uh, approaching it. In order to get his glide factor, David, on his skis uh, bodes well for his finish because he always gets away from Dario slightly on this downhill descent. That was Legkov uh, whizzing through <laughs> as uh, we wait for uh, this little group here. So it's France with that uh, Magnificat and then should be Belov coming up there. And that's uh, Olsen and there's Helner just off the back of that little group there. Legjanin just getting to grips with Olsen there on that uh, left-hand turn. And now this very, very familiar climb. Uh, this is Legkov working so much harder than the lead two because he's pulled back some of the, the deficit. And he's, he's so desperate to make contact with his lead group. It's in his interest to be with them. Only half distance though, Mike, you know, 15 kilometers, you know, a lot can happen. Colonia invited to take over, doesn't have a problem, decides that he's going to go. Nortuk wants to have a little look at as to who might be emerging up the hill. It'll be uh, Alexander Legkov. It's got to be a little uh, tense up at the front there, just worrying how close are the pack closing in. There's a lot of pressure at the front here. Well, Edkov, uh, what, 26 seconds? I think it'll be much the same again, David, as they come through the split timer. Well, it's been like that uh, before. And We've got a follower. Oh, who is that? I now. think that's Belov. Is it Belov? Or Vlijanin? It yep. is Legjanin, yeah. Oh, what a pity. I did say that is a, a difficult, a testing left-hander, but he's lost so much. He's gone from 35k, 40k an hour to zero. So Legkov, Mag Magnificat uh, facing you. Still 27. Yeah, pretty stable there. The front two are keeping that gap there. And uh, 26, uh, that could be Ch uh, Ch Chabotko, Kazakhstan. There, there he is, uh, 25 in fact, Poltoranin. 26, Chabotko, 11 going through, that's Lukas Bauer. 36 from uh, Chanusov of Russia. And then 23, that's where Legjanin has dropped back to. Do you know what, he was in, in fifth position there and that single mistake has dropped him all the way back. And his, his spirit now will be slightly broken from making that silly mistake. 
Yeah, well, sometimes a bit of anger helps, but I think uh, the problem is that the deficit now is so much. You get the wind knocked out of you as well when you have a fall out of that. The spirit is broken slightly because Vlegiani, the, the, the bravest man out there, he's just uh, he doesn't know anything about pushing to his limit. And uh, he put all his money out early to try and close this, was making a big impression, and now he's been set back. So, uh, Colonia and Nortuk together, and you can see now 41 seconds back to Magnificat. That's pretty good. I mean, he is really where he was at the start of the race. He was 47 seconds back. So it just shows you that the front two are really controlling this. Lucas Bauer, well, he's yo-yoed a bit, but 49 seconds. He took off that initial 10 seconds, but hasn't been able to take any more off. Note the pace at the front uh, certainly lifted, and it's holding the, holding the rest or the pack at bay. And they have to work together now, although Dario seems to be doing 80% of the work. Uh, we'll see Nortu passing him, of course, uh, prior to the descent. He's got slightly faster skis and then leading again and again, I think, up into the stadium. But the interesting thing is uh, that obviously uh, Legjani was the man who put the big effort in in the first half. Who's now going to put the big effort in in the second half? It looks like they're... The, the, the next pack uh, after leg off in the far distance there, it, it, Magnificat seems to be doing most of the work at the front. Uh, now I think it's a Swede at the front, so that's probably Helner or, in fact, Olsen, I think. Olsen, yeah, Helner was just off the back. And this beautiful, efficient technique of Dario Colonia's. Pedro Norto just so concentrated on his race plan, his game, how his strategy unfolds. He likes games of poker, he loves strategy and chance, and uh, his chance, his best chances are to stick in behind Dario Colonia. They've got to get to Legkov, surely. That's one tough athlete. He is, but you've got to think, with all those racers working together, they should actually be able to close the gap. Olsen taking it on here. Olsen wearing six in white for Sweden, Magnificat in number five, but Bib. Check the expressions and all the faces here. They are pushing so hard to close it down. Well, 25, that is Poltaranin. Now, is he the Legjanin of the second half? I think he's, he is such a good mover when it comes to classic skiing, Poltaranin. But again, you see, he was 121. He was actually with Harvey, with Legjanin at the beginning of the race, but now he finds himself uh, in a position to really perhaps do something now. I think they are going to absorb very soon. They're going to absorb Legkov. And that's Olsen taking the initiative here. He really has put a turn of pace on. Yeah, but the man who actually looks pretty good there, looks full of energy, doesn't he, uh, Paul Turanin? So, Paul Turanin of Kazakhstan, 24 years of age, and interesting to see whether he can keep this drive going. Didn't get much out of the World Championships last year, the uh, Kazakh, but as we know, he was a decent junior, got a silver medal, but that was about four or five years ago, but has shown up uh, well in the senior ranks. Uh, the best race of his life? Well, winning a 15-kilometer classic in Davos uh, last season. What are we doing today? 15 kilometers classic style. Olsen is uh, giving this everything. He's realizing this is a crucial part. No one else was willing to really attack. Uh, Olsen, he, the attack is breaking the rest of the field. Well done to him. Nortuk, same routine as uh, the previous time. He's got the slightly faster glide, and he wants to lead up here into, this, uh, into the stadium. And then if uh, we're true to form, as they uh, come to turn to go out of the stadium, he'll invite Dario to take it, <laughs> take it on again. I suppose it's working, um, in fact, about 60-40% of the lead, almost, well, 50-50 almost. Dario bringing his hands closer to his shoulders. You need to bring the ski poles further in to keep the hips forward, to get the, the grip through the ski. Olsen, who started the race some 52 seconds. He's got the deficit down to 38. He's uh, just about nine seconds behind Legkov. And thank you very much. Uh, I've done my bit. Now you do your bit. 
just tuck in behind here. Although they're working hard now, David, they really are pushing it on their comfortable limit, I would say, but they're so aware that um, it's working. They're working as a team on this one. Well, they've kept this race in control. They've reached the two thirds distance, five kilometers to go. Uh, they can probably take this next two and a half kilometer loop pretty steady, and then they can have the fireworks between them. And, you know, the suggestion really is that uh, maybe what Nortuk's going to do last time around, if it's pretty similar, is to attack on that big climb, but this time keep it going. Yeah, and possibly even taking it a little, a little earlier than he has been in the last couple of rotations. I think the gap now is much uh, increased. In fact, it is. There we are. It's 30 seconds already. They really have uh, decided to, to hit again. Well, that's why Olsen has actually tried to put some pace into it here. Legkov 32, Olsen 38. But what that tells you is that uh, Johan Olsen, just looking back, uh, 38 seconds. And in fact, uh, at the 10 kilometer point, actually hadn't made anything in the last, just checking this out, in the last 1100 meters hadn't gained anything at all. So the field going through at 10,000 metres and Colonia and Nortug even more comfortable at the moment. Legkov being slowly reeled in by Olsen Belov, Polteranin in there. And uh, then this uh, next uh, chasing group. I didn't know, I didn't notice Vlegianin going through, but um, he's certainly not in the, in the top 15 there. So he did lose all his energy after the fall, the early attack and then the fall. I think he's just, you know, demoralized to such a degree that he's just eased off and will ski home in his own time. Colonia though, uh, up here. Colonia and Pedro Nortuk, both 25 years of age. One lives at altitude, that's Colonia at uh, Davos. Pedro Nortuk at uh, Merica. And uh, actually, when you look at their records, you know, uh, they haven't actually won as many World Cup races as you might think. I mean, Colonia, even though he's won the World Cup title, has only got five World Cup victories to his credit. Peter Nortuk, yesterday's uh, would be number 11. You would expect more. I think that that's 11 from, what, about 71 starts for Nortuk. And I think he's been on the podium 27 times. The, so his odds of podium are, are great. But yes, it's uh, only 11 wins. You would, uh, thinking about the name Nortuk, you expect him to have more victories than that in the World Cup. Yeah, he's a big occasion racer. That's what he loves. He loves the biggest stage of all, the Olympic Games, or like last year, home snow in Oslo. He loves it. Uh, Olsen's just uh, pulled in leg off in the background there. Yeah, but the, it's a bit of a yawning gap. You can see Helner further back there, just about to be reeled in by the other train. I was interested to, to hear that the Dario or a Dario Colonia's fan club, they had a Dario day or a Colonia day in uh, Val Muster, where he's from. A, a big day it was and invited some of the best of the foreign athletes down as well and uh, the roller skiing for the kids they did a little race for them and then a party in the evening they're going to do that each year lovely valley uh, where he's from or, well originally but of course living in davos now as good as dixon day up in uh, inverness <laughs> in abby moore <laughs> abby moore <laughs> so here's olsen got to terms with uh, leg there's helner on the uh, left there who seems to have been spirited up there with the effort of Johan Olsen. Well, I thought um, one of the main contenders would be Eldar Ruining. I think he's timing this beautifully. I, I, I said he might be third today, but he needs to keep with his Olsen pace. He needs to be dragged forward now. Oh, there he is. Ru uh, Ruining, 18. Yeah, Polterani right behind him, Magnificat right behind him. And uh, Olsen. Is he finally going to get in front of uh, Legkov? And what is that going to do to Legkov's uh, morale? It's going to knock him a little bit, but he is the ultimate fighter. Look at look at the attitude of uh, Legkov. He's uh, he's way over the comfort zone, and uh, he's going to try and stay with Olsen. Magnificat is just burning up now from that early attack. Look at this. Well, you just saw the shortening stride there from Magnificat. You saw Polterainen really with good extension. Uh, Magnificat just shortening. Ah, and, and Polterainen, when we see him again, he, he moves so easily on uh, on his skis. It looks effortless. Once again, Nortug let me to the front. I need a good line down this hill. 
don't want to risk anything. I wonder if Dario is uh, believing that he can take him to date. He needs a strategy, though. Dario would need to kick, uh, I think, with three kilometers to go if he stands a chance. Even then, it's a slim chance. Ah, oh, Olsen. What a beast, what a day he's having. He's, he's just getting away from Legkov. Yeah, Johan, who, uh, well, it was a surprise uh, for us. It was a surprise for him, the way that he won in uh, Shushan. And uh, in a sense, uh, we expected him to do perhaps a little better yesterday in the 10 kilometer freestyle race, but he was only uh, seventh in that. But nonetheless, it shows that he's in good early season form. Finished uh, the World Cup season last year in 45th place. Again, you know, really picking his and choosing his races, which is something you can do when it's a, an Olympic or a World Championship season. But in this particular campaign, where you've got none of that, then what you've got to be looking at is results consistently all the way through November, December, January, February, and March. It's a, it's a huge racing season. If you imagine uh, of any other sports where you can hold your top racing from uh, mid-November through till the end of March, it's, it's quite a feat. Look at Lekov. Sorry, uh, Lekov skis a little slower, but uh, he can. He can pull Olsen back in in these horrendous climbs. Wow, oh, ruining. He knew he had to attack or try and pull. Look at the smoothness here from Paul Turin, and it's just, I know he's got a long reach, but he makes it look so easy. Yeah, both Ruining and Paul Turin are slightly more upright in their stance. Very much, and, and that allows you to get easier. Your body weight goes more directly through the base of the ski. If you lean forward, your hips are back, and you can't get the, the grip through the, through the wax on the base of the ski. It slips. Well, it's now or never, Dario. We're two and a half kilometers to go. Uh, we've done all the uh, presentation bit. We've uh, now come down to the racing part of this competition now. Two and a half kilometers, and uh, you just sense that there's no way that he can beat Nortug because if he makes a break, you sort of have to be confident that Nortug is going to cover it. And Polteranen coming up there to be shoulder to shoulder with Legkov there and uh, also running I, I think it's going to be running uh, Olsen has tried and uh, he hasn't failed he's uh, in third place at the moment but uh, I think that Elda running in this next 2.5 is going to really really turn up the pace well Elda running who started a minute and 11 seconds off the pace and now at the 12 and a half kilometer point finds himself just 32 seconds off but really essentially running for third place there's one place for all these guys to go for because i can't see these front two being caught now it's uh, i don't think so it, i'm so happy to see toby angerer uh, up in 12th position he's got his form back and uh, that will do great things for his confidence for the the races to come this is where i thought that dario needs now to to really attack, to, to uh, try and attack early. I know it still won't make much difference because uh, he's got the limpet there, the, the man that can. But uh, what do you do? How do you try and break Nortug in the last two and a half? Well, we've been saying that now for, uh, what, two seasons? <laughs> well, a bit longer than that, actually, but, you know, certainly uh, two seasons. I think you have to try so hard to create some distance on him and uh, that would be by going early at uh, two kilometers from the finish line. Lucas Bauer there, 10th place, uh, hasn't lost anymore, but hasn't gained anymore. But again, I think uh, coming off the sick list, that's uh, still a pretty good run by him. And just uh, rewinding to last year at the World Championships, Matti Heikkinen, a member of Finland, won the 15-kilometer classic from uh, Röning. Röning was the silver medalist. Uh, Martin Jonsrud Sundby of Norway took the bronze ahead of Volshensev of uh, Russia. Yawi Yervi was uh, in fifth place. And then Magnificat ahead of Lukas Bauer and Lucy Aydin and Anger and Legjanin completed the top ten in uh, Oslo. But uh, at the moment now, Röning looking... Uh, Pretty strong, I would say, and uh, your observation early on about uh, his chances uh, looking as if they might well be fulfilled. 
He's looking good. Uh, Olsen, the, 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 the sting is not uh, finished yet, and Olsen, Olsen is determined today. He wants to still try and close the gap, so Ronin's going to have a tough battle if he does want to uh, take the third spot. But there again, Polterainen's in there. Well, look at this, Nortuk's gone wide, and he's putting in an attack here. This is, uh, this is where I thought uh, Dario maybe take the initiative. Nortuk usually, as usual, playing games here. Just kind of intimidating Dario, saying, listen, I can turn it up whenever I want to. Great race for third. Helner on the left, Olsen on the right. Then you've got Roening in red, and then uh, Polterainen in uh, blue, yellow, and blue. And then Legkov clinging on the end for Russia. So Russia, Kazakhstan, Norway, a couple of Swedes in there as well. And uh, Dario Colonia just leading on here. And uh, surely it's got to be the big hill climb. 13.9, 1,100 kilometers to home. These guys, though, are moving. And uh, you can see that uh, the gap last time we looked was about, what, 30-odd seconds. I wouldn't be surprised if it was just uh, a little less than that now because of the pace that they're just beginning to put into the race. Interestingly, I saw Helner and Olsen. They had a little uh, brief conversation further back. Are they going to try to do some blocking here? 24 seconds so you can see it's because they're really beginning to move and uh, get close to sprinting that's why they've closed off a little bit of the gap there but there's five for one place on the podium and Magnificat can't go he's now detached next camera shot I'm quite sure it'll be Nortug at the front he'll try and get a, a gap up this one no he he hasn't he hasn't achieved it yeah, he, he has no he has he has he's slowed it down again look at this he's really slowed it down playing games come on Dario stay with it of course uh, this is also very uncomfortable for anybody trying to race with Nortug because it's very staccato it, it, and, it, and it just breaks your rhythm. Most athletes would like to get a rhythm and keep in that rhythm and then move and accelerate and bring the race forward. But what Nortug does is he just busts your rhythm. I, I, think he f I think he's on high adrenaline all the time in these situations and he doesn't really know. He, he just tries to anger people. And uh, he's a really nice guy, but uh, he, he can annoy some of the athletes in these races. Dario, you need to stick in behind him and you need to attack when he attacks. Well, Nortuk's going to attack surely on the climb here because he's done it every single time. Has a little look under the armpit now, setting himself up now to uh, go for this move up the hill. But the difference is now he's got to finish it off. Where he is now, he's got to finish it off and Dario is determined not to let him get away. But they're in now to this race to the finish line. Peter Nortug in red for Norway. Dario Colonia in black for Switzerland. And look at the way that uh, Nortug has up the tempo here <laughs> and just comes and he does exactly the right thing. As you come to the crest, he pushes again. There's not another man ever in cross-country skiing who's been it. This hill is horrifically steep and Dario Colonia is an incredible athlete, but he made him look pedestrian. He made him look like a tourist. And there goes uh, Eldar running, moving up into third place, being taken on by Polteranin, who's gone past Johan Olsen. Now, I would think that Ronin should be able to hold him off because he should be the stronger double polar down the final straightaway. But here is Peter Nortuk looking to make it uh, another World Cup success. Two in 24 hours here to take the Rooker treble for the man. Dario Colonia closing, but uh, Nortuk just controlling. Thank you very much. Uh, once again, glides across the line. He's first, Dario second, but who is going to be third? This is the chase. Reldar running. Is it going to be a third place for Norway? Polteranin chasing, there is uh, Eldar Röning, there is uh, Polteranin, and then the two Swedes, Olsen and Helner, and well done Mike, you spotted it, you nailed it, <laughs> predicted it, and he's done it, well, Eldar Röning into third place ahead of Polteranin, that's a great race by Polteranin, and then the two Swedes, Olsen and Helner, fifth and sixth. Oh, amazing, Polteranin uh, from 25th up to fourth, and, and Röning, it, it's a long way back to pull in one minute 20 for both uh, Röning and Polterain in great races. Yeah, indeed. Uh, and uh, Legkov, Magkov, Lucas Bauer finding a little bit there. 43 seconds again. That's encouraging for the Czech number one. But uh, Peter Nortuk, well, quite remarkable. Here come uh, another gaggle on the left there for uh, Canada. That's uh, Alex Harvey just coming home. Uh, so Rickardson having a little tumble with, uh, I'm not quite sure, oh, Tobias Angra, the two of them Ow. tying up. 
I thought Rickardson would do well, and he has done well to pull uh, that big deficit from bib 35 up to, I think it was 13th. Well done to him. Angerer, competitive again. That looks like Jens Philbrick. And look at Legjan in down there. Well, just in the top 20, but uh, for him, it's uh, what, a, what might have been, and if only... It could have been very different. Take that fall away, which uh, which happened for him at six kilometres when he'd done such a, such a huge amount of work to to haul them back to 33, and then he lost it back to one minute three. Yeah, because he was moving before Polteranin, before Eldar Running was moving. So if he could have sustained that move, then it would have been very interesting. The red suits of Norway still coming through Yerdal, and that's good for him. Well, 38th up to 30th.